So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to the DNN Medical Series. I'm your boy Damar and this is Nikki. And if it's the first time you're joining us today, please ensure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. So in today's video, we're going to look on study tips and techniques. So stay tuned. Okay, so we're going to discuss study tips that we found very useful while we're studying and a very important thing to do is to discover your own learning style. So find out what works best for you. So if you find that you work better in a group of friends or you work better by yourself, you work well with music or in a particular environment do that if that works for you so you can memorize the information you can apply the information you can most importantly understand the information another thing to do is to go through your lectures so you're going to go to the lectures for one then you're going to go through them for yourself and if there's something that you don't understand you can go on YouTube or any other places that you can find supporting videos for that specific topic and it will help you to understand the lectures better. Alright, so as Nikki mentioned before, it is important for you to find supporting um, information for whatever it is that you're studying. So, Additional to the videos, you can look for background information, just gaps or anything that you're not sure about in the lectures. You need to do additional reading. You can use your textbook or you can use credible online sources to help you. Also, when you're doing this and when you're studying, you need to be consistent. Consistency is key, guys. You're not going to just go over the material today and then two months down the road, you're like, okay, I have this part. And then when you're going over it for exam, it just come right back at you. You need to be consistently going over and over and over the information. And that's when it will stick. So it's important for you to just be consistent. If making that study timetable works for you and you find that you can follow it, that is also a useful tip that you can apply. So guys, while consistency is very important and you need to be going over that material, it's also very important to take breaks between your studying. So it makes no sense you're going over and over and over the material again and again and again and you're not taking any breaks because this leaves room for confusion and you get stressed out and you don't have time for anything else. So take those breaks. And another thing to do guys is to just casually explain a topic that you have studied to someone who might not know what you're talking about. So maybe a non-med student and you can also explain it to a med student. So the non-med student would probably ask you the basic questions and when you ask, when they ask you that basic question, you get, the under, you get to know if you understand the concept or not. So if you're learning about cell, and you learn about the different types of cells and so on. And a non-med student is what what is a cell? And you can't answer what a cell is. You know that you need to go back to the basics. And you know now that the med student, the person who actually went through the stuff already, will ask you of some more advanced questions that is more specific to the topics and so on. So both of these will help you to know the basic as well as understand the concept and know how to apply them. While you can ask a med student or someone that is totally unaware of the information that you're presenting, I also do active recall. So I'll talk to myself sometimes when I'm studying or I'll talk to the wall or try to explain to the wall to see if I understand it and if there's something that I'm forgetting or I can't explain quite well to myself or to the wall, 
I will go back and I'll do further research and further um, reading and try to understand it the best way that I can. So I tend to do that and it works quite well for me. Secondly, um, do practice questions. Practice questions are key because sometimes you may study the information as how it is in a textbook and then to apply it is a different thing. So by practicing questions, you get to see what the questions are like and how you need to be thinking and things like that. So they are very helpful and I suggest that you do the practice questions for help. So guys, another thing that works for me is the reward system. So whenever I study, I try to reward myself for no for studying. So if I cover two pages or three pages, I just set a goal of the amount of pages that I want to cover. And when I do that, I try to reward myself by watching an episode or two of Paternity Court or an episode of my favorite movie or to just listen to my favorite music because I study well with music in the background as well as just watching music videos while studying. So the reward system really works for me because there is something that I'm anticipating that if I read these three pages and understand it, I can watch this full episode. Yeah, so that works for me. Right, so another very important thing, guys, that I will continue to stress is do not be afraid to ask for help. So if you're studying something and you don't have a full or good understanding of this topic, ask for help. Ask your friends who might have covered the topic already or might not even cover the topic, but they went to the lecture and understand from what the lecturer said what it's about. So you can ask them as well as you can go straight to the lecturers themselves. They have office hours and you just need to find out their office hours when they can see students and just go to them and say, sir or miss, could you explain this to me? I don't understand this and just bring your resources and they'll explain it to the best of their abilities and you'll understand better. So ask for help. So guys, while the study tips that we discussed previously are very important, they may not work for all courses. So some courses you have to apply specific study strategies. Um, an example of this course is anatomy as well as histology. So these courses are the practical courses and they tend to be hefty. They're very heavy on the information. So the most important thing to do for anatomy is to go to the labs. So go to the labs with your textbooks. So we have the metals that has the pictures and so on. Go there, look in the textbook and try to find what you're looking for based on the lectures that you got. So the key thing for anatomy is to go to the lab and practice. See the cadavers with your bare eyes. And if you stay home and just read through the textbook, you think you have it, but you actually don't. When you go in the lab and see all those nerves and arteries, you say, what is this? But as I said, it's very important to go to the lab and apply the information that you know with practical things that you're looking at. Okay, and histology is another course that you need to go to the lab for. So you have a specific histology lab and you can go there to look on the histology slides because you have, an his, you have a histology practical different from your anatomy practical. So you need to go and have a feel of what these slides are about. Anatomy and histology as a course itself tend to be very big and we tend to pay more attention to this than other courses. Because it's so much and you have to go to the labs and so on, it's a practical aspect. So most persons give most of their time to this. What we're trying to say here, guys, is to balance your time. Do not give every single time to anatomy and then you're going to just give a little time to the other courses. And those other courses may account for more credit than the actual anatomy courses. So just balance your time and give all courses good amount of time and not just one specific course all your time.
as Nikki mentioned before, the credits are also important for you to factor in because some courses carry more credits than others. So like for FDT, which carries six credits, it's important that you do well in that course because that will um, boost your GPA. Because if you look on it, the other courses are three, two, and two credits. So that's seven overall. So if you look on the statistics, if you do well in one course, which is six credit, that will have a lot of impact on your GPA. Also, for pharmacology, which is a part of FDT, the strategy that I use or the technique that I use is that I study the suffix of the drugs and then I try to know the exceptions. So sometimes the drug names are long or it may be difficult for me to pronounce or study. So studying the suffix, I find that that works for me and just knowing the exceptions. So I know sometimes you have a lot of information to go through and the time may not be sufficient. So these tips are to help you during crunch time. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna do is for your anatomy practical, I know sometimes the lab may close just before the exam or you may not have time to go to the lab because the lab is packed or something. Um, you can use YouTube videos. There's Ackland Anatomy that shows you the live specimen and you can follow and see where the arteries and the nerve and the muscles are and that gives you a good idea of what the specimen will be like in the exam. Also, you can focus on eye yield stuff. So stuff that you know will come in the exam or the lecture might, might emphasize it during the, the lectures or based on practice questions, it may give you an idea of what are the stuff that they, are, they, they always ask. So another important thing to do guys is to study with a friend. So a friend might have gone through a course that you're just starting to revise and so on. So you guys can just help each other to revise and explain topics to each other and so on. And another thing to do is to increase your study time. So if you used to study like four hours or five hours per day, increase it a little bit as exam gets closer. You can go for a six or a seven hours just studying and practicing and so on. And these really help. So thank you guys for watching this video where we share general study tips as well as personal study tips. I hope you can find something useful from this video and you will develop your strategy over time. And guys, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get more tips and more information about UWE and Med School. Until next time. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>